This tutorial is all about temporary and permanent hard water, the effect that they have on soap and also how each of these can be cured. Our drinking water was once rain and that rain has percolated its way through various rocks on its way to going into reservoirs and so on. Uh, the effect that the rain has on those rocks depends upon the rock itself. Many rocks that the rain comes through are based upon calcium carbonate, for example limestone and marble. All rainwater is acidic because carbon dioxide dissolves in it. Carbon dioxide being the oxide of a non-metal is an acidic oxide. When that dissolves in water it makes a weak acid called carbonic acid. This carbonic acid, this mixture of water and carbon dioxide shown here, reacts with and dissolves calcium carbonate in limestone, chalk and marble and as it dissolves it becomes soluble calcium hydrogen carbonate. It should be made out of two ions, the calcium 2 plus ion and the hydrogen carbonate 1 minus ion. As we'll see, it's this dissolved calcium hydrogen carbonate that leads to temporary hardness of water. But before we look at temporary hard water in any detail, let's look first of all at what hard water is generally. Now hard water is water which contains the calcium ion, which is the Ca2 plus ion, or the magnesium ion, which is the Mg2 plus ion. The problem with these ions is that when they meet with soap, they form what's called scum. And scum is a waste of soap and it also gets into the fibres of clothes which are being washed. Now, soap, chemically, is a compound called sodium stearate. And that's the sodium salt of a long chain fatty acid. And sodium stearate is a soluble substance and it dissolves to make sodium ions and stearate ions, which are negative ions. But when these stearate ions meet with the calcium or the magnesium ions, they make scum or insoluble calcium stearate. And it's only when all of the calcium, or indeed the magnesium ions, have been removed from the water as scum that the soap can form a lava. Now back to temporary hardness. We're going to look at how we can remove the temporary hardness of water by, for example, boiling the water. Temporary hard water is water which has had rain passing over calcium carbonate. It's dissolved that calcium carbonate to become soluble calcium hydrogen carbonate, which has got this formula Ca brackets HCO3 twice. Now, this compound is unstable when it's heated, and it breaks down and forms calcium carbonate, which is called limescale, and it's seen as the water boils as tiny flecks of a white powder, carbon dioxide and water. The upshot of this is that when temporary hard water is boiled, all of the calcium ions which were originally dissolved in the calcium hydrogen carbonate become precipitated out as solid calcium carbonate. There's now no calcium ions left in the water and therefore the water is no longer hard. It's been softened by boiling. Of course, the problem with this is that limescale can form in any heating apparatus in hard water areas. For example, on the element of kettles, in the element of washing machines and dishwashers, and within the hot water pipes. This can be a problem. Next, we're going to learn about another kind of hardness, which is called permanent hardness. And this is caused by another dissolved compound called calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate would dissolve into rainwater where the rain has passed over a different rock called gypsum, which is chemically CaSO4 or calcium sulfate. Now calcium sulfate is stable to heat, so when it's boiled it doesn't break down and doesn't form a precipitate. And that means that the calcium ions remain in the water and will still form a scum with soap even after it's been boiled. Let's look now at how we can soften hard water. There's two methods of doing this. 
Indeed, well, there's a third method which only works with temporary hard water, which of course is to boil it, but putting that aside, both of these methods work with both temporary and permanent hard water, because both of them act upon the calcium ions in the water. The first method is to add washing soda. Now, washing soda is chemically sodium carbonate, and sodium carbonate has the formula Na2CO3. Unlike calcium carbonate, sodium carbonate is soluble, and when it dissolves it forms sodium ions and carbonate ions. And it's these carbonate ions which can then meet with the calcium ions in the hard water to form insoluble calcium carbonate. That therefore precipitates out and removes any of the calcium ions, or indeed magnesium ions, in the water, and therefore removes the hardness of the water. Once the sodium carbonate's been added, the hard water has now been softened and won't form a scum with soap. Washing soda used to be sold in shops. Nowadays, most washing powders contain a small amount of washing soda so that the washing powder works more effectively. A second method of softening hard water is to use what's called an iron exchange resin. This resin is effectively negatively charged and we can make a sodium salt of this by adding sodium ions to it. The sodium ions don't cling on to the iron exchange resin particularly well. When hard water is passed down the column and this hard water contains for example calcium ions, the calcium ions attach themselves to these resin molecules in preference to the sodium ions. So in a way they displace the sodium ions. The sodium ions then come off the resin molecules and go into the water. In this way there's an exchange of ions. The calcium ions from the water are removed and join onto the iron exchange resin whereas the sodium ions which were originally attached to that resin are released and go into the water. By the time the hard water has made its way through this column, all the calcium ions have been removed and replaced with sodium ions. As sodium ions make soft water, therefore the water has been softened. The issue, of course, is what we do once all of the sodium ions have been removed from the resin and replaced with calcium ions. That means that the resin can no longer do that job of doing the softening. When this has happened, we've got two options. One is to replace the resin. The second is to put not hard water through the resin, but soft water, in other words, water which is very rich in sodium ions, for example, salty water. This will push the calcium ions off the resin and put sodium ions on instead. This flushes out all the calcium ions and replaces them with sodium ions again. The resin is now ready to be used again. We call this recharging. Some people choose to have one of these attachments on their domestic water supply so that they always have soft water coming out of their taps or going into their washing machine. Other people who are concerned about having too many ions in their drinking water will use a filter like this Brita water filter. Now calcium and magnesium ions are actually good for health but there are other ions which can be removed in the same way, for example lead ions and other heavy metals like cadmium. Finally we'll look at how we can show in the lab whether water is hard or soft or indeed further we can show whether water has got temporary or permanent hardness. You need to be able to describe an experiment to compare the hardness in samples of different sources of water. To do this we're going to look at a past exam question. Claire collects water samples from three different places A, B and C. They have different amounts of hardness. She wants to compare the hardness of these samples. Look at the diagram, it shows the apparatus she uses. Write down how Claire uses the apparatus to compare the hardness of the water samples. 
Well, what Claire would have to do is to use equal volumes of these three solutions, A, B and C. For example, she might use 10 cubic centimetres of the solution. She'd measure that out using the measuring cylinder and put that into a flask. She's filled the burette with soap solution. To the 10 cubic centimetres of solution A, she would add 1 cubic centimetre of the soap. She would then shake it to see whether she got a lather or not. If she didn't get a lather, she'd probably get some scum being formed, showing that the water was hard. Now, if that happened, what she'd then do is to add another cubic centimetre of the soap solution, and another, and another, keeping count, until, of course, she got a lather. That would show that all of the hardness had been used up. She'd then repeat the experiment using 10 cubic centimetres of solution B and of the sample C. And then by comparing the amount of soap needed to make a lather in each case, that would give her a measure of the hardness of the water. The one needing the most soap would be the hardest of the three. Here's a second exam paper which illustrates some of the results we might get from such an experiment. This question is about hardness in water. Luke and Henry investigate the hardness of three different samples of water and they do this by adding drops of soap solution to each sample of water. They add soap until lather remains on the surface after shaking. Look then at their table of results. Look at the table of results. Tap water contains both temporary hardness and permanent hardness. Explain how you can tell from the results. Well, if the students had only used the tap water as it stood and added soap to it and shaken it, and we'd seen, as we do here, that it took 30 cubic centimetres of soap in order to make a lather, we'd have concluded that that tap water was hard water. But we wouldn't have known whether it was caused by permanent hardness, temporary hardness, or a mixture of the two. Now, if the students had boiled the tap water, and the tap water had then become soft and needed practically no soap, then that would have told us that the hardness was due to only temporary hardness. If they'd boiled it and it had no effect on the hardness of the water, and after boiling it still took 30 cubic centimetres of soap, that would have told us that it was due to only permanent hardness. But look, after boiling, it now takes 15 cubic centimetres of soap. That means that some of the hardness is due to temporary hardness, which is removed on boiling, but some is also due to permanent hardness, which isn't removed on boiling and remains.